a little bit ago you talked about um, not the Germany taking away the guns from the Jewish people. And I did that under laws that were enacted in the Weimar Republic about the state being allowed to remove guns from people that they deem a danger to the state. And then shortly after you mentioned this, you mentioned that, you brought up uh, that you might be okay with saying that only people shouldn't have guns if they have mental illness or whatever else. So mental illness then is about being a danger to yourself and to others. And to me, danger to the state versus danger to self and others feel functionally identical. And I don't understand how you don't see this as a, as a horribly slippery slope that could lead to almost the exact same thing. This case was a law that led directly to crystal knowledge. Yeah, no, I'm, the first thing I said in the campaign last time was the president's immigration policies reminded me of crystal nut, and they went wild. Uh, look, uh, Sandy Hook, the guy was uh, a known mentally ill young man whose mother said, I'm going to help him develop self-confidence by buying him every weapon, uh, every piece of, uh, you know, clothing that... Uh, that uh, full-scale uh, military use, so he could feel good about himself. He, uh, she was the first person he killed at Sandy Hook before killing all the little kids. So you don't want a gun in that guy's hands. And, and you know, there are accounts of people who have mental illness, and they're not, they're not accounts that are written for the purpose of getting firearms out of their hands. They're written for the purpose of helping them but then doctors occasionally will say this person is probably a danger to himself and others because he's so haywire. So I really don't have a, a problem having that information referred to what, whether or not that they can own a gun. I take your point though that uh, you know the, the state is very quick to see danger to the state. That's what happened in all these cases. I just gave you three. I'm working off a book this thick where there are 200 examples and they go back to antiquity. You know, when it was spears. <laughs> Slaughtering your enemies is a time-honored pastime of government. So I do agree with you about that, and it's just a matter of uh, what you do with the information. As I mentioned, uh, you know, when I was in office, I didn't side with the police chiefs over the right uh, of a person to uh, own a gun uh, unless somebody could make a showing, why not? I believe there were court cases brought by the American Civil Liberties Union uh, on behalf of gun, uh, hunters, uh, gun owners for once, and it was settled with some middle of the road, this is what we're going to do with the information. So I, I want to go back and look at that. That might be a detailed uh, answer to your question. Is this my friend, Berman Supreme? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Well. Uh, I'm glad to see you here. I haven't seen you at any libertarian events recently. Not too recently. Uh, not too recently. Uh, where's your glitter tie? <laughs> uh, I have my glitter tie at home. It's my favorite tie. Okay. I'm looking for an occasion to wear it. It's a bright red tie that Berman let me have at an event in uh, Massachusetts not long ago. Yeah, yes. Autograph. And uh, my question is this. As you know, um, the Libertarians have recently started a tradition of uh, raising funds for state parties and for charities uh, by taking pies uh, to the face. And I know the store did not have whipped cream, but they did have a uh, snack pudding. And I was wondering if, uh, and we bid on it, and so people could bid on it, and uh, they were debidding, and we would raise money for the charity of your choice if you will agree to take a pie to the face. <laughs> Berman, I'm happy to work with you, including on raising funds for the Libertarian Party, but that's what they call a bad photo op. <laughs> I don't think that was a duck. 